Hello, this lecture will cover pages 279 through 286 of my lecture notes. Please print those pages out and have them in front of you as I present this lecture on medium scale integration logic circuits. Chapter 9, Part A, Decoders. We're going to start on page 279. In our textbook, it's chapter 9, at least the version I'm using, but more importantly, it's MSI logic circuits. Up to now, we've been working strictly with small scale integrated circuits, SSI. Pretty much the 7400, the 7408s, the 7411s. Um, they're all media, small scale integration. Now we're going to look at ICs with a little bit more active devices in them. It's called MSI, and we talked about this before. Greater than 12, but less than 99 gates per IC. And by gates, each gate has approximately four to five active devices or transistors in it. So you could rewrite this equality in terms of transistors per IC. The decoder. The decoder is a combination of logic circuit that accepts a set of inputs that represent a binary number and activates only one output that corresponds to that input number. Only one output. Remember that for decoders. That's very important. Here's a block diagram. A couple things I want you to, me to want to mention with regard to this block diagram for a decoder. For n input codes, we get two to the n possible outputs. So if we have two input, we get four output. If we have three inputs, we get eight outputs. If we have four inputs, we get 16 outputs. If we have five input data, data lines, we get 32 outputs. This enable here can be low or high active. I'm showing it here as high active obviously there's no bubble here and I'm showing two enable lines we'll talk more about that in a minute but to start out we're only going to have one enable that enables this circuit keep in mind with a decoder only one output goes active and it can be high active or low active depending upon the way this is designed and again we're going to get to that in this lecture let's look at a couple examples first of all First example is a two to four decoder. There's our two input lines and here's our four outputs. It's also referred to as a one of four decoder. In other words, only one of these four outputs go active. Well, if, if it's a one of four decoder, you know it has two inputs. So you can, re engineers refer to this either as a two to four decoder in terms of the inputs and outputs or strictly in terms of the outputs of one of four decoder. It's the same thing. And I'm showing one enable line. What's inside this block diagram? Here's the logic circuit. Pretty easy to understand. I want you to notice I label the outputs D0 through D3. I have a high true enable here. This enable has to be a one to put a one here and a one here and a one there and a one there to enable these gates. If that enable is zero, this circuit doesn't work. And these are our inputs x and y that are up here notice x is the most significant bit i'll write that in there's our most significant bit you don't have to go through the ones and the zeros here maybe you do this one time but you don't have to do it any other time because if this is the most significant bit and this is a zero and this is a zero d zero is going to go active it'll go to a one and everything else will be zero if this is a zero and this is a one that's a two so D2, the output D2 is going to go active. If this is a 1 and this is a 0, that's a, let me make sure I said that right. If this is a 0 and this is a 1, that's a binary 1 and D1 is going to go active. If this is a 1 and this is a 0, that's a binary 2 and D2 is the only output going to go active. And if these are both 1s, that's a binary 3 and D3 is going to go active. You don't have to go through the 1s and the zeros. In other words, if I have a 1 here and a 1 here, the only gate that will have all 1s on it is this one down here, providing you're enabled. If this is a 1 and this is a 0, that's a D2. So the only gate that will have a 1, 1, 1 on it when this is a 1 and this is a 0 will be this gate. You go through that once and you don't have to worry about it anymore. But that's a two to four decoder or a one of four decoder. We'll, we'll, we'll use it from the block diagram. We don't really care about the internals of it. Let's look at the next example. 
Here's a 3 to 8 decoder, also called a 1 of 8. Only one of these eight lines will be active depending upon what this binary input is. You have to have a high true enable. Now, I'm not showing the enable down here, and maybe we should do this from the textbook. It might be easier to see this from the textbook, but let's take a look here. There's, there's what it looks like. You can find it in the textbook, but there, here's this, this, this truth table over here that corresponds to this particular decoder circuit, but notice I have, they show the least significant bit up at the top on this one, and here's the most significant bit. You don't have to go through the ones and the zeros. If this is a zero, this is a zero, and this is a zero, the only output that's going to be active is output zero here. You can look at the table and you'll see that. What if this is a zero? What if this is a one, and this is a zero, and this is a one? That's a one, zero, one. With this being the most significant bit, that's a five. And D5 is the only one that will go active because gate five will be the only one that has a one, one, one on it. You can see that from the function table. Let's do one more. Let's say we have a zero, one, one. A zero, one, one is a binary six with this being the most significant bit. O6 is the only one that will go active because it's the only one that's going to have a one, one, one on the input of gate six. And you can see that from the function table. That's basically how these decoders work. We'll get to the applications in a minute. Let's take a look at this. How would you modify the circuit here, which we just looked at, if you wanted a high active enable? And then how would you modify this circuit if you wanted a low active enable? Because there's no enable on this circuit here. I show it on the block diagram up here as a high active. How would I implement a high active, first of all, on this? Well, basically, all I'd do is this. Here's 5, 6, and 7. I'm only showing the last three here. But notice what I would do. I would basically just this, do this. There's my high true enable. I'd go through a buffer so it doesn't change the logic level. A 1 here would say you were enable in the circuit. I'll put a 1 here, and it would put a 1 on this, 1 on this, 1 on this input, and the other 5. And it would enable all the 8 of those AND gates here. It would enable every one of these. What if we wanted to put a low active enable? Well, you forget about this circuit. And there's your low active enable, but now this, this can't be a buffer. It has to be an inverter. A low here will put a 1 there, and that 1 does the same thing. Forget about that now. That circuit's out. There's your high true enable and the way you'd get it to work, and here's your low true enable. One or the other, not both. A low here would put a one here and you enable those. So what I just showed you how to do on this problem right here, I can do it on the first example. Let's do it on this one though. If I wanted to make this a high true enable, I showed you how to do that. Or if I wanted to make that a low true enable, I showed you how to do that as well on this circuit. What about a 4 to 16 decoder? It's also called a 1 to 16. Well, here I have an instruction register. Okay, don't worry about that right now. It's a 16-bit register, and I'm taking the upper four bits here, I15, I14, I13, and I12. It's sort of hard to read. And basically, that's a decoder. This is a decoder circuit here. There's my inverters. It gives me all the inversions of these, and here's my 16 possibilities. There's four inputs. And there's your 16 outputs. Notice that what I'm producing here in this microprocessor chip is I'm producing these mnemonics. When I do my fetch instruction and I put it in the instruction register, it's taking the upper four bits, and those upper four bits are going to tell me whether I'm going to load the accumulator, whether I'm going to add or subtract or store the accumulator or load the B register. Okay, that's what these, this is load the X register. I have B register there, but that's load the X register right there. This is a jump. This is a jump of minus. This is a jump of zero. I wrote some. These are called mnemonics. But how do you generate these? Well, you put in a zero, 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 zero is a binary zero. That gate's going to go active. That's it. What if it's a, um, um, a, a, a zero, one, one, zero? That's a six. 
jump is going to go active. You don't. You can go through the ones and the zeros, but you don't have to. That's an application of a decoder. This circuit would have four inputs and 16 outputs. This example is how you could use a 4 to 16 decoder to decode a 4-bit instruction that was stored in a microprocessor's instruction register to give you whatever mnemonic you need out here. So you know how to execute during the execution cycle. On page number 283, Let's take a look at it in the textbook. This is important because you're going to have a, your last lab on your home, on your security monitoring system is going to use this device. It's going to use a, it's going to use a 74 LS138. Okay. It's a three to eight decoder. This is a three to eight decoder or a one to eight decoder. And this is what it actually looks like. I want you to notice here that here's our three inputs, here's our eight outputs. But there's some differences here in the real world. First of all, the enable isn't just one line or two lines. Matter of fact, it's three lines. You have an E1, which is low active. You have an E2 enable, which is low active. And you have an E3, which is high active. This is in your textbook. It's hard to see that here, but E1 is low, E2 is low, and E3 is high. Now, why do they have that? that they have that. To, to expand to, to multiple decoders if you want to link these decoders together and we're gonna see that on the next page we're gonna see how we're gonna take four of these 138s and we're gonna put them together and basically we're gonna make a one of 32 decoder that, that's what this is all about this is this this allows you to link these together to make a to go from a three of eight to a to a 4 to 16 or a, or maybe a 5 to 32 to expand them without having extra logic because they this logic here is inside that chip notice also the outputs are low active when these outputs go active they're low only one of them is low and the other one is high that's an important consideration here's the actual circuit here's the block diagram of it down here I want you to notice here that in, in order for the out for the input sequence to give you one low active output, okay, you have to have look at the function table here. You have to have a low on E1, you have to have a low on E2, and you have to have a high on E3. If that's the case here, then you can control these outputs by by just these three inputs. Let's do just two examples. If this is a zero, this is a zero, and this is a one, O1 will go low. If this is a one, 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 a seven, O7 will be the only output that will go low. Very easy to understand. We're going to use this in an application coming up in a, in a, uh, uh, three lectures from now. Make sure you look over example nine, one. Example 9.1 is very good to understand um, how these 138s work. Make sure you look over example 9.2. 9.2 is also uh, in your lecture notes. It's on page uh, it's on page 284. There it is. I want you to go ahead and read this, but let me discuss it real quick. Basically, what we're doing is we're taking three. 138 devices and we're linking them together using these enables and we're making a 1 of 32 out of it so based on these five inputs and with this being the most significant bit you can put your binary pattern up here and then you can just you'll know you can know which one of these outputs 0 through 0 31 go low these are low octave don't forget but take a look I just want you to take a look at this enable circuit what we're doing is is each one of these you're only so you're selecting one of eight on the output and these three lines up here do that think of what i'm saying now only these three lines are the select lines that goes to every one of these so what you're doing with these three lines is you're selecting one of eight here or here or here or here what determines whether you're using this z1 z2 z3 or z4 
these upper two bits here because these two bits here we take to these enables so if you take a look let's call this z0 for a second I think it's easier to understand that let's call this z1 let's call this z2 and let's call this z3 and I'll tell you why I want to do that because if you have a zero and a zero here the only one that's going to activate is this z0 go through the logic right here and you'll see this will be the only one that has an enable what if you have a one zero Z1 is the only one that will activate. Go through the logic and see that on the enable. What if you have a 0, 1? Don't forget, this is the most significant bit. A 0, 1 is a 2, so this is the only one that will be enabled. And a 1, 1 is a 3, and this is the only one that will be enabled. So these upper, these upper two bits here on this 5-bit sequence determine whether you're at Z0, Z1, Z2, or Z3, because I renumbered them. These, A0 through A3, Two, just step you through whatever one's selected. Example 9-2 is very important. Make sure you look it over and read over the solution. Let's look at a BCD to decimal decoder. I think we don't have to look at the textbook here. We can go straight to page 285. Yeah, page 285. Here is a BCD. We try to focus it. This is a BCD to decimal decoder. Notice I have a BCD input, four bits. And it's going to produce an output, one output that's course going to correspond to 0 through 9. This is what it looks like. It's a 7442 chip. There's applications for this. We'll see these applications coming up in about three lectures. Very easy to understand how this circuit works. The only thing you have to know is from the block diagram. You don't have to be familiar with the detail. You just make sure you look at this block diagram and go through the combinations here with A being the least significant bit, D being the most significant bit, and see if you can see which output's going to go active here. Decoder applications. I want you to find this in the textbook. Eh, maybe it'd be easier to grab that real quick and put this down here for you. Let's see. Skip over a few pages right here and see if I can get you to uh, the decoder applications here. Yeah. You could. I mean, you could look at this on page 286, or you can just take a look at what we have here. I want you to go ahead and make sure you read this. But notice what we have here is that 74 ALS 163 chip. Take a look at the 163. It was a mod 16 counter. And uh, we don't have to worry about synchronous or asynchronous loads or clears because we're just... What we're doing is we're disabling all these. We're, we're enabling the chip here by pulling these high, and we're disabling the clear, and we're disabling the load, and we're just tying all these lines low because don't forget, you can't have inputs floating. We're never going to use the load to put zeros out here. We're going to free run this at one pulse per second. That's one hertz. So every second, this is going to run. And all it does is step through the sequence. These are just our input lines to our BCD to decimal decoder driver. This is not a BCD to seven segment decoder driver. This is our BCD to decimal decoder driver we talked about on the previous page. And all we're doing here is free running this from 0, 0, 0, 0 up to 1, 1, 1, 1, and it goes back to 0, 0, 0, 0. So as you very slowly run this free running counter, it just steps through this gone low, then 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 this, and so forth, and it goes back to here. Well, notice you can connect these outputs to solenoids if you want to, and that's what they've done here. These are open collector outputs here. This provides the pull-up. We've talked about that. And let's see when O3 goes low. When O3 goes low, this particular solenoid here, K1, pulls in, and you get current flow. These are high-voltage output devices. You put plus 24 here, and it draws current through here, and it draws in the solenoid, and you drive this circuit out here. When that shuts off, you, don't forget that inductive kick. What you need to do is collapse the field so this changes polarity. That goes to a plus, that goes to a minus, and you, you, it collapses the, 
the magnetic field on itself so you don't destroy the output and you could connect up these solenoids or relays if you will to any one of these outputs they do it here for k1 they do it here here's another one on 06 so when you get to 06 it activates this so you can activate certain devices at certain times based on this circuit using a counter and using this BCD to decimal decoder driver you could look at the timing diagram down below here and it explains this make sure you understand this it's pretty it's pretty a useful circuit I want to mention at this point one quick thing here that remember you had designed for me a BCD to seven segment decoder that's the only decoder or it's one of the few decoders that you only they have more than one output at a time think about that that BCD to seven segment decoder which we designed and I think they talk about it here sometimes you had to, you might have all the outputs you might have all seven of them one two three four five six seven to get a binary to get a decimal eight represented so the BCD to seven segment decoder driver is the one of the few that you have more than one output go active 95 percent of the time decoders only have one output that's going to go active make sure you remember that and let's see where we were we were looking at page uh, 285 And I'm pretty sure that that's the last thing we wanted to look at. But before I let you go, let me make sure. Two hundred eighty-six. Yeah, that's where we talked about the decoder applications briefly, and I mentioned that uh, the BCD to seven segment decoder, and that concludes this lecture.